What is up everybody? Merida Gaming here. We're back for another World of Tanks Tech 3 Tank Showcase and Review. Today we're taking a look at the Tier 7 German Tank Destroyer, the Sturr Emil, or as it's abbreviated in the game, the Saint Emil. That's very similar design to the previous tank, the Nashhorn, with the rear mounted gun, the open top carriage, and the paper armor. You're also fairly tall, so your camo is not great compared to the other sniper tank destroyers. So, yeah, it's kind of an odd duck. But I really enjoyed playing it because it has a derp gun as uh, one of its options. Uh, 490 alpha and 231 pin, but you don't have a gold round, so definitely a downside. Your dispersion, 0.36, also not great, but definitely have to try to get that down. But the real downside to using this gun, 15 ammo. With a 13 second reload, 15 ammo, you're going to be about mm, 4 or 5 minutes until you're out of ammo. Yeah. So it kind of depends on how the games progress as to whether or not you want to use this gun or the um, lower tier gun that has the faster reload and much higher ammo capacity. But let's go ahead and compare to the other two rear mounted gun tank destroyers, the ICV and the SU-100. So your standard round comparatively is better than the ICV and the SU-100. Your damage also grates. Shell velocity, eh, not great, but on par with the SU. Now the problem is when you step up to their gold rounds, which you do not have, they get up to that 250 and 241 here, or 258 here. So that's going to be the downside to playing the St. Emil uh, against other tank destroyers like this. They definitely have the ability to fight those tier 8s where you're right on the edge. Uh, well placed shots you'd be able to, but your dispersion isn't great, so they're not going to be super aimed in. You have to take your time and pick your shots with this tank. Alright, the other option you have is a 10.5 centimeter gun. Now, your penetration on your standard rounds. Not great. 169, you're going to have problems with those tier 8s. Well, the mediums you can probably deal with, but heavy tanks, not great. You do have better damage and a comparative reload time, but you also have 60 ammo. So it kind of depends on your playstyle as to which one you want to go with. I honestly love derp guns, so I went with the other one. Um, but yeah, kind of have to pick and choose your battles. Uh, the penetration is actually lower than the standard round on the other gun with 227, but the fact that you can reload and fire much more rounds kind of makes it worth it. It really depends on what you're trying to do with this tank. A lot of people do not like this tank. Uh, I'm one of the few that actually enjoy what I've seen. Uh, let's go ahead and get back over to the derp gun. All right, so yeah, back down to aim time. Aim time, not great. You do have to wait for it to aim in. They're moving a lot, kind of annoying. Dispersion, 0.35, not great. We also want to try to get that down as much as possible. Then we get down to our speed. Yeah, you're not going to be rocketing around the battlefield in this thing. You have to pick your spot, just drive straight to it, and hope that someone else hasn't beat you to it. Because these other things... Other tanks, much faster, able to get into position way before you will. Armor, paper, much like the ICV. The SU is more of a little bit more of an assault TV because it's moving towards uh, the 268 version 4 style play. Um, but still, a lot of stuff to be able to pin that. And then your camo, you do sit up much higher than these other two tanks. So you don't really have great camo. You have to stay right on the edge of your range or being spotted range um, and play effectively in the tank. So, what are we going to do for our skills? Um, with that 13 second reload, I actually didn't go with the gun rammer. I wanted to be able to have the smallest aiming circle and I wanted to go with the best camo setup and the best view range so that I can spot for myself, I can stay hidden as much as possible now you could swap out the the um, binox or move this over and put in a gun rammer to speed up your aim time. But with 15 rounds, honestly, the speed of the reload didn't matter for me. I was being very selective with my shots to try to maximize my damage in this tank. 
All right, and then skills. What are we going to want? We're going to want camouflage. We're going to want brothers in arms. We're going to want concealment. Um, definitely want to try to get snapshot. Um, even though it's not a turret, it does affect when your gun moves left and right because that's considered a turret. And then we also want smooth right for when you have to move up so it doesn't bloom out quite as much. And eventually, you want to get recon and situational awareness. Oh, and intuition. Always want intuition. All right, so what does that do for our stats? So that gets us below 13 seconds reload. That gives our dispersion down to almost sniper level. Anything up below 0.3 is really good. Uh, you're not pinpoint accurate, but you're accurate enough to definitely hit those tanks. It's just going to come down to luck on whether or not it actually hits the shot. And then finally we get down to our camo. So 39.9 after not moving for three seconds. So you shouldn't be spotted by those light tanks unless you're way too far forward. You definitely have to make use of the double bush mechanic and only move forward once the rest of your team has the front line has moved forward as well. So you want to stay right on the edge of uh, spotting range. And the moving camo, you're going to get spotted. Um, I always got spotted when I moved if I did it a little bit too early, but you'll kind of learn as you play on when to move. D range when after you stop moving for three seconds, 4.99. So if you don't know how that works, after you get past, it's either 240 or 445 or 454. I can never remember which one. But for every 10 over that, it reduces the enemy's camo by 1%. So it is okay to go over the max V range in order to get that extra little bit of a bonus to help spot those enemy tanks. So you're definitely spotting for yourself, which I found was very useful, especially towards the end of the game. I was end up kind of playing light tank. Uh, on those games where a lot of my other friends had died already or the light tank had died, I could still just slowly creep up and spot stuff, you know, just creep up a little bit, let my Binox go off um, or activate, see if anything's there. And that's where that extra percentage of enemy camo reduction helps. And just keep, keep doing that until we find everybody. Anyway, let's go ahead and get over to the gameplay. So we're going to be watching Star War from the Camp Clan in their same demo. Okay, so they're taking a look around, seeing one here. We're on Prokhorovka. Not Prokhorovka. Yeah, what is this one? I can never remember. Steps, that's it, steps. Oh, they're actually on an assault. They are the assaulting team. Alright, so they are top tier here, so that's handy. I have not actually played Assault on this map in a very long time. And it looks like the Super Chappy. He's got to be careful because you can see that white circle. He will pretty much be spotted if anything crosses at least the green circle, but definitely the white circle. Backing up so it didn't be spotted. And he's spotted. See, that's what I was saying. Like, this tank does not have good camo. Yeah, I would say the artillery is going to have a field day with this guy. He chose not to try to get into a bush. Looks like they spotted the Nash Horn. Uh, this is a good one he can hit. Any idea? Go ahead and. Oh, 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 yep, amen. As you can see, that critical not great, but yeah, that big old derp gun hits really hard. There's a heavy tank. Uh, behind a rock, though. Oh, now he's not. That shot went really wide, yeah. That's the one downside of having the, the big dispersion. Permission to engage? Yep, free aiming. There you go, big old bit of damage. And that's that's why I like this tank. It just doing 490 damage in a tier seven tank is so much fun. Kinda like why I like the uh the KB Dash two. The the new tier five double barrel uh, TD from Russia. It is so much fun to play if you use the double barrel on something and just wipe it off the face of the, the planet. All right, so here's a B58. I don't know if he's going to be able to pin that. Maybe in the side. Oh, yep, looks like he can. They hit him. Oh, and pinned him. Yep, look at that. Already up to 1300 damage, but now he is spotted. See, that's going to be the, the, the problem. I probably would not have shot at him again. 
Um, as long as I wasn't spotted, that is. Because with only having 15 ammo... Ooh, ow. The only problem with that only having 15 ammo is taking shots to finish stuff off when they only have like 11 to you know, under 100 health, you really question whether or not you want to take that shot or not. The tank bobbing back and forth. Yeah, it, on a tank that's moving back and forth, especially on a wheeled vehicle, I wouldn't even bother trying to shoot because most likely you're going to hit the wheel, not pin them. That's the problem. Is most of his team has not really moved into position. There would have been a nice shot. Deck Panzer move. Panther moves back up. Oh, there you go. Nice big old hit. Yeah, that's really only what four pins. That was a big hit. Five seventeen. There's another tank. For it to aim in. Nope. That was one of those new ones, wasn't it? Yeah, the Chito. Those are kind of hard. There you go. There's another big hit. Yeah, 44 health. That would then be question whether or not to shoot. Plus, I know there's not very many tanks left. I wouldn't even bother trying to shoot that EVR. Like he might, though. Oh. Trying to hit a fast moving target with this tank with the slow gel speed. Not, not really an option. Alright, so now they're down to. Enemy light tank, two artilleries, and two TDs. So he's moving up. Probably trying to get. Oh, oh, somebody shot at him. Guess he never really went unspotted. So. Trying to stay trained directly at that. Okay, now he's going to try to take a flanking route on the Chito here. Seems. Team's done pretty well. 2400 damage in a tier 7. It's okay, not bad. Especially when that's only like 5 shots. Ooh, can he finish off an artillery? Uh, I think the artillery's a little bit low. Yeah, artillery's a little bit too low. You're not gonna hit that. He proved me wrong. He hit that. 2 kills. That was like what? Yeah. Not much damage under 100 I believe. Oh, WZ off to his left. Is he going to see it? Is he going to see it? Yeah, off to your left. Yep, there he is. Be able to shoot him before he reloads. Yep, got to get down into safety. I well, should finish him off. Okay, now you can go after the Chito here. I'm in your debt. Well, you really gotta pay attention to the minimap. I'm bad at doing that. Okay, so the Chito is in the standard TD position over there in that corner watching the one line. See if he can get over there. Pretty fast game. I wanna say that the assaults are what, 10 minutes? There he is. The question is, got a couple options here. I would probably go, yeah. If the T-150 go left, kind of hold his attention, and then come around from the right side. Might also be able to get this light tank when it comes out. Nice. Interesting. Yeah, that thing had pretty good camo because it, he didn't see it until it was too late. Or almost too late. Nice. nice. We just Another kill. Three play. kills. 3,000 damage. As you can see, that light tank had no problem going through. Alright, then I can try to come around from behind. That Kaito should be focused on the... Yeah. That's E-150, but if he high rolls here, he might be able to finish him off. Ooh, 11 damage. Now he's got to back up to try to not get taken out, but the ATH should finish him off. The 
this point with as low a health as he has, he has to wait for the AT-8 to take a shot. Turn around, boom, dead. Nicely done. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the end game stats here. Alright. So, high caliber, ace tanker, and a few smattering of other um, ribbons and, and badges. 41, 79 damage. Not bad for a tier 7, honestly. Uh, 4 kills and 20, 284 assistance damage, either from tracking um, or from spotting. Um, it's probably tracking, because you do track stuff with this thing. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. Uh, don't forget to check out my uh, Twitch channel. I try to stream on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Um, and yeah, that's going to be it for today. This is Meridian Gaming, and I'll see you on the battlefield.